What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters Musa, Lorenzo, The Game Dev, Adam Hart, Daryl Gaynor, Stinky Boy, Steven Sharp, Chelsea, Alex Arellano, Margolius, Anne Van Leeuwen, Justin Petrzak, Ryan Zandis, Brian Nowatchik, Jordan David Inneking, Meme Review, and Tokusa. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producer, The Anime Hybrid. Thank you all very much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Okay, oh my god! <laughs> you son of a bitch, get off me! Oh my god! I didn't see the time! I didn't see the time! God dang it, I didn't see the time! Now I know what you're thinking. Watch the Abraham new Lincoln. one. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. I know what you're thinking. Abraham Lincoln. I'd like some bacon. Every time I every time I go back and I think about that one clip from uh, Wor uh, World Star Hip Hop's questions, they like, go out on the street and ask people questions. It's like whose face is on the one uh, one dollar bill? Literally pulls out the one dollar bill, looks at it, and the woman goes. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I remember that. I was like, eh. <clears throat> and then of course that was the fifteen, uh, thirteen minus fifty, thirteen minus fifty. God dang, forty-seven. <laughs> dang, forty-seven. Wow. So Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> it's like Amos. One of our friends who was in... Uh, oh, God, famous. <laughs> Holy shit. He was in uh, about him forever. geometry class, and he was asleep, and the teacher caught him asleep and was like, you know, Amos, how many points are there on a triangle? And Amos looks up, it's like, oh, octagon. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's, he's, he's asleep. Octagon. <laughs> it reminds me of... A long time ago, during the invasion angle with WWF and uh, WCW, when Booker T and The Rock were having a little back and forth, and The Rock was just like, "At Booker T, Booker T, you go to school, and that short little Booker bus shows up at your house. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. You get in the class, and the teacher's like, okay, class, what is two plus two? Do you know Booker? Booker T says, oh, Booker T knows that. Two plus two? Thomas Jefferson, sucker. <laughs> the Rock was ridiculous. The Rock was too much of it. Uh, him and Chris Jericho were both tearing it up that night. Both of them on the same stage, like, shitting all over Steph McMahon and Booker T on the same go. It's like, aw, oh, it's, it's a dream come true. Do you know who else shits and shits all over all of us and everything else? Eminem. The media. Yes. Media does so much to just tarnish anything, like, any good out there. They try and, like, drench us in a sea of needless negativity. And instead of looking at, like, heartwarming stories and, you know, human, like, human moments, instead they have to remind us that, you know, the world is terrible and horrible and awful. It's like... Yeah, it is, but at the same time, there's also bright spots out there that you got to focus on from time to time. Otherwise, you're going to be depressed and you're going to want to fucking kill yourself. The game I was playing last night was talking about how the, these people moved to this uh, island to make their own life, pretty much, and got recognized as a separate entity by their government, and they were all really happy there because they didn't have media, which had been statistically proven to cause pretty much perpetual unhappiness and everyone in the mainland oh, dude absolutely so. they, they actually did a litmus test they took an american family and moved them to japan and they took a japanese family and moved them to america and they kept they changed their diets they changed everything and do you know where the majority what happened to the japanese family their amount of stress in their household skyrocketed do you know why it wasn't because of the change of the food it wasn't because of anything like that is because they were drenched in the media. The media just kept pumping bullshit into them. And the American family, they were perfectly happy. They were just like, they were just over there just like, hmm, you know? 
It's actually not bad here. <laughs> we don't understand a damn thing that's going on, so we're good. <laughs> well, they well, <laughs> all in all, man, you can't it's watch just TV. Been... Have to be outside. Have to be just be chilling. Can't understand shit. Well, I'm happy as hell. Well, honestly, dude, it's the probably whole... a good idea. Maybe I should just forget English. <laughs> Yeah, it's like ignorance is bliss, as they always yeah. say, pretty much. Well, the whole thing... I honestly feel like I have better days on days when I don't wake up and immediately look at the news. Oh, yeah. Well, this like, is why I, I don't... I just kind of have a more carefree day, and then, like, I'll look at Facebook at some point, and I'll be like, yeah, all right, there's one thing that pisses me off, there's another, there's another, okay, okay, I'm just... Well, this is why I have pretty much silenced all news media outlets on every application, on Twitter... Like, I'm talking CNN, Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, I, none of them. I, I actually... No interest in hearing what any of them have to say. I want to say I have an appreciation for Google, because when I go to Google to Google something, and it pops up little news articles down below, they are almost always stuff I give a shit about, like video games and yeah. stuff like that. Like, it's like... Yeah. Uh, Something, something with uh, a movie, like, you know, studio you care about. Like, they're going to be doing this, like... Yeah, they do um, mine the same know, way. Th this game's coming out, and we're, they're saying learning, this about right? it. This game's been delayed. Like, I've, Google is actually really good at tailoring, like, the news that I actually want to hear about that doesn't ruin my fucking day. Like, yeah. yeah. So I give some respect to them on that. I, I give props. I, I may be an ignorant fuck if I don't listen to all the politics and don't look into it and everything, you know, but you got to admit, it's fucking depressing. It's bullshit. It is. Like, to a large nonsense. majority of it's just fucking bullshit. It is. Not even true. It's like, I would almost kind of rather be an ignorant it, fuck and be happy than just be as depressed as I am, I, like, knowing a lot of I, shit about what what's going on Amen. and how stupid people are I being. actually talked to my mom yesterday about this. I say I, I said this to her. I said, whenever a news a news article is released by a big publication, if that if that article is proven to be false, they don't need uh, it is required <laughs> it should be required by law to make it front page news that the article that they wrote yesterday which said all this bullshit. They don't even is fake. Retor they don't even like. No, they don't post retractions. They, they don't, don't do anything. They don't do any. They don't have any will or want to apologize or make amends for shit. Like they used to, they would put out a story. They used what, to do that. What they have actually shown recently is that if enough people do get pissed off about it, they will change it and they'll retract what they say. But, but if you ever get pissed off if for it it's, to happen. If it's an online article, although, and they do that, and you look at the title up above, they'll keep their same title. They won't change like the page it's been on or anything. No, yeah. So you can just, still see the stupid ass shit that they originally instead, said. Instead, it'll just be like big, <laughs> epic, stupid title, and then right below, in like smaller print, updated. Like updated such and such day. Yeah, they do that sometimes too. I'm just like, I'm like um, are you kidding me? Come on. Because, like, they clickbait the fuck out of titles and stuff like that. Oh, they do times, all so. the time, man. It's bull. It is absolutely it's like It's really sad when the news clickbaits. Like, that should not That's be That's all it thing. is now. It's been yeah. that way for the past five years. Yeah. And you know what? I saw the most clickbait fucking article I've ever seen the other day, and it was like... Whatever the the main character from The Last of Us Two's name is, Ellie, it's like or uh, Joel or... the the hatred of her proves that um, that we're not yet ready for realistic body images in video games. <laughs> oh, Abby. Oh yeah, yeah. Here's the thing: people don't hate Abby. They don't hate Abby. They hate. Well, they hate. But that's what it's got to be made about, though. No, I know. Right? They... That's what it has to be made to be about. Well, even they, if it's it has not. to be an agenda. There, there has to be an agenda behind writing nowadays it's instead like, of the truth. If, if me People who play video games don't get to decide why they don't like or do like a video game yeah. anymore. Well, Only the fucking games journalists get I to decide what, what our opinions are and what we say about yeah. it. Here's the thing. I could give two shits about Abby. I played through the game all the way, and here's what I'm going to say. The game is beautiful. The combat is awesome. The game is too long. Some of the character, the new characters, I can find some, I can find some relevance with them. But for the most part, they bore the shit out of me. And also, the story, which tries to subvert all expectations for the sake of subversion, doesn't that sound familiar? Hmm, Last Jedi ringing any bells? Game oh, of Thrones. Yes, it's like we're doing this to subvert all expectations so that no one can really see what's coming. Look, here's the oh, thing. Oh, the downfall of wrestling as well. Is oh that my god! It's hard to see what's coming when you had something that was really good and you turn it into a pile of shit. I'll give well, them that. And yeah. here's the thing: 
I liked playing through the game for the most part, but when I was reminded of why I was doing what I was doing, I was like, huh, you know, now that I think about it, all of this that's happening right now is bullshit. Why, why are we, like, honestly, why are we playing as this character? I don't even find this character interesting. I, I, what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna finish this game and be done with it. And as soon as I was done with it, and the ending happened, I was just like, alright, I'm returning this game, and I returned it the very next day. (laughs) I'm just like, yep, I'm not, no, I'm done. I'm done. You naughty dog. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the scene uh, the, there's two videos we're going to be watching by the internet historian one is on his inca- incognito mode channel which I know there's other videos that he's posted on there that he was supposed to post on his main channel but because he's lost the passwords to his main channel he's now posting them on his incognito channel oh I didn't know that so yeah so, that really sucks that does yeah, suck that sucks. but there's two we got here there's the CNN skirmishes and any polls a goal uh, so we're going to watch CNN skirmishes first. Here we go. Meme Insider. War on the allegations that CNN blackmailed the user who created the anti-CNN Trump wrestling video. So the Reddit user behind the Trump CNN body slam video is apologizing. I've watched with sadness how the Cox News Network has tried to trample over our freedom of expression. And they decided that they could get their pound of flesh from this individual. July 2nd, 2017. (laughs) Trump is browsing Twitter for some memes. He sees this one and hits retweet. Over half a million likes and many, many more hurt feelings by CNN. As grown adults, how can they let it rest? They don't. They get their top investigator. Oh, there's Andrew Kaczynski. Andrew Kaczynski on the case to find the creator of the gift. July 4th. CNN had found their man, user Han Asshole Solo. <laughs> CNN was able to scour through his Reddit history to find his personal Facebook. What followed was an ultimatum. Delete everything or be doxxed. In exchange for his oh. anonymity, Han Asshole Solo purged his Reddit history and issued an apology to CNN. From here on out, he was a hostage. In light of this, CNN issued a statement. CNN is not publishing Han Arthur Solo's name because he is a private citizen who has issued an extensive apology. Uh, CNN reserves the right to publish his identity should any of that change. They're threatening to dox somebody. That's illegal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's illegal. By every definition of the law, that is illegal. Yeah. Now, CNN had squashed the one who had stung them, but in doing so, they had stirred up the hive. 4chan was not about to let Han Asshole Solo be silenced in vain. Their plan? To Operation so Autism CNN Storm! That tracking down any single target would be pointless. July 5th. Their operation was a multi-stage assault. First, there was an alliance. An agreement between former friends. Oh. The second was a constant barrage Wait. of meme artillery. Uh, Final Fantasy music the in the background? Yeah. Was to target He's the used that before, I'm pretty sure. CNN by contacting their advertisers directly. <laughs> Super <laughs> male vitality. <laughs> CNN with through Twitter. The first making the hashtag CNN blackmail trending for many to see. And the second, getting prominent figures to tell everyone that CNN's hostage was a 15-year-old boy. Even Donald Trump's own son tweeted out that the person threatened by CNN was only 15. The only way CNN can then counter this accusation was by releasing the information they had on him, Mm. which would then result in possible legal ramifications and then being attacked further from all sides. Meanwhile, every forum, every feed, every platform was being flooded with CNN memes. As the situation (laughs) escalated, Kekistani forces went about attacking the only thing that CNN really cares about. Jesus God. It's ratings. The strategy was simple. First, download the CNN app. Then rate it one star, then delete. Wanting to keep up the pressure, Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson (laughs) created the first meme contest. $20,000. Whoa! Whoever made the meme they liked the most about CNN. In the past... Internet polls and contests were destroyed by 4chan shitposting. Bodie McBoatface, yes. An actual contest was born specifically for that purpose. 
<laughs> July 6th. Reports started coming in by reputable media sources that were covering and condemning the meme war. This attention only emboldened the forces of 4chan and Reddit. But yeah, while that's some the uh, battle theme from uh, others, Final Fantasy VIII. Were scheming. Uh. Already there were rumours suggesting that CNN had got the wrong guy. Could it be possible that this whole thing was started from a mistake? No, this was just more clever disinformation. In this manufactured fog of confusion, one final long-term plan was hatched. You say, Chad, I didn't know you were in this video. Oh. What rip? It, what, dude? I mean, honestly, oh. some of your some of your clouds I come in on, walk in on sometimes. I'm just like, bro. I'll <coughs> tell you what. Yeah, I've been dang. living in a purple haze days for quite a while. Man. Purple haze. I don't are even in notice his brain. It. I don't even Thousands notice. of undercover <laughs> anons would begin using universal remotes to change public televisions off of CNN oh. to further hurt their ratings. <laughs> July 12th. A full week passed and new developments were scarce. CNN has seemingly been busy on damage control, having app stores suppressed value. Well, you're views. solid. Publications that stand in solidarity with CNN have been churning out articles condemning troll behavior and echoing the claim that people who make gifts don't deserve anonymity. The most salient example of these publications is MTV, as they are now in production of a spin-off to their Catfish TV series. Except it will focus 100% on doxing people who like to have fun on the internet. Soon, on primetime television, you will see someone have their post history, real name, location, and face doxed on camera. So how this story ends could be up to you, as any one of us might be next. What will be the aftermath of this meme war? What's next for Han Asshole Solo and the <laughs> Kekistani Army? All of this and more on the next issue of Meme Insider. Wow. Okay. So yeah. It, look. I didn't know about this. Dude, there's a little... I remember when it first happened, but it was one of those things like that didn't last very long. No, it didn't. No. But it kind of faded into obscurity. Well, cause... the lasting effects yeah. of it were immediate, but eventually everyone was just like, okay, let's move on to the next thing. Well, just like everything else we've watched on here about memes, everybody's using them, everybody's stealing them, they don't belong to anybody, they just are. Once they just they exist. Exist. How are yeah. you going to... Hold anybody accountable for fucking memes, dude. It's like a collage. It's like, are you going to be mad at a collage? No. I know I asked that to the countries who are literally putting people in prison for making memes. Because they put people in prison for, you know, fucking each other in the wrong holes. You know what I mean? Like, they, they put people in prison for ridiculous shit. Well, yeah. some of them are actually, like, countries that don't usually do stuff like that. Well, like, like, I, like, I heard an Australian guy ended up in prison for a meme. Was recently. it racist or something? Hate I crime? I don't remember. Like, um, dude, there was a I don't think I actually heard. There's a comedian who got arrested in Canada for you know for telling a joke that someone felt was obscene. Yeah, you can get arrested for speech in Canada. Yeah, which is ridiculous because yeah. oh, what the fuck is this? Like the era of Lenny Bruce, where by him muttering the f word up on stage, all of a sudden he gets put in handcuffs. Like, look, there's shit that's offensive to me. It's just. I respect a person's right to say something as long as they don't take any like full action against me. Well, I don't care. In America, it's been said in the interpretation of the law many, many times, just because something is in bad taste doesn't mean it's actionable under the law. Doesn't mean that there's anything that can be done about it. Offense is not a an offense under the law. Try you tell, can be offended. Yeah, try telling that to these men, to these uh, man babies that come out of that come out of college and expect the world to just hand them everything on a silver platter. Well, when they see their day in court, they'll find out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the thing is, CNN could get sued, could get sued by the user for doing what they did. Yeah. I mean, that could happen. To any, like, if anyone has enough of a bankroll behind them, they can stand up to CNN and get. That's just like that one kid. Uh, stood up to the Washington Post and CNN over the uh, the Covington Catholic thing. Oh yeah. I mean, they were prove it showed that those kids did pretty much nothing wrong. They like the the Native American guy came up to him, got in his face, and was beating the drum in his face, 
and they said nothing to them. They they literally said nothing. The pre- people who were saying shit were the black Israelites. My people. Yeah. The... I already told you, man. <laughs> as soon as I can find an application, I'm signing up for the black Israelites. That's right! <laughs> I don't give a shit, man. Those are my people. <laughs> I want to be able to stand out in Times Square and harass fucking everybody. How awesome would that be? <laughs> Just, just say and get shit away that's with like it. blatantly not true. And, and like, the third dinosaur, listen to me, you heard the third dinosaur was my second cousin. Ain't that? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I love it, dude. I want to join the Black Israel. I want that. I want that hype man behind me at all times. The that's right. No, dude. The Louis Louis Thoreau is that what his name yeah, is? Yeah, Louis Louis Thoreau. Yeah. He has the best encounter with the black Israelites ever. If you could just watch the documentary he did where he it's it's amazing. Anyway. It is, yeah. So uh polls on the internet are not are sometimes not a good thing. Uh, there was actually a poll I heard about a long time ago, uh, to do with uh this dad wanted to name his daughter and he left it up to the internet. Here's the thing. The poll, the poll came out normal. The poll, like, the, the, the name she got was pretty normal. But there were, there were some that were pretty close to the top that actually concerned me. One of them, like, first name, first names was Megatron. Another one was Street Lamp. And then some middle names were absolutely hilarious. Uh, Sharkisha. And then of the sea, oh, and the funniest one, the funniest middle name suggestion was wait for it. That's that's. Uh, oh, wait for it was the name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. That's the best one. <laughs> that's pretty fun because imagine me, Nathan. Wait for it, Hamilton. <laughs> My aunt knew a lady that was trying to name her uh, daughter Volvo. And uh, she didn't know why everybody was making such a big deal about it. Because she she was reading materials in, like, the hospital and was like, oh, that's pretty. And they were like, no, bitch, you don't understand what you're about to do. My mom hates her, hates her first name, her, her, like, real first name. What? Minerva. Minerva? She hates it. That's very interesting. That's a villainous name. Well, no, it's, it's actually the, like... One of, a goddess of like wisdom and art, mm. which is which is beautiful when you think about it. That's but, what she turned out to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my mom hates it because it's just like it's just it's just too many syllables and it sounds it it just doesn't roll off the tongue like Minerva. And, and it's like it sounds every, like an ankle disorder. Or something. It's a little like it's like you're getting on Minerva's. It's not super pretty sounding. It's like Vern. Vern. <laughs> Vern. Yeah, like sure almost thing, like, Vern. It's just that sound. Like, up in this bitch. Or Eugene. You Jane, yeah. not like a super aesthetic sound to make. With which your mouth. that's why she often goes by her first her her middle name Anne, which is yeah, that's mm-hmm. the whole thing about her. So all right, anyway, Poll. any, any polls a goal. So let's see what uh, let's see what kind of polls the uh, internet historian digs into on this. 2010 pop starlet Justin Bieber is at the height of Whoa. popularity. Everybody wants a piece. Of Macaulay Culkin. From all around the world, people are demanding the beads. Young women are the worst offenders. Everybody had Bieber fever. But the question was, where should he tour first? His expert marketing team had a solution. They said, hey Justin, let's put it to a poll. Vote for your country, and if you win, let's send Bieber there. You, You need to vote, mate. You know, what happened to, to fucking girl power? Zig zig ah. So the poll opens. <laughs> I like that guy. And so do the threads. Useful ideas are thrown around until a good one finally emerges. <laughs> a strategy to make North Korea great again was devised. And only oh a few God. hours later, they were rising in the poll. It passes Sweden, Chile, Spain. Lads, this is getting interesting. Colombia, Turkey. Poland are all pushed out. Just one left. Best Korea does it again. By the end of the week, they were declared the winner. North Korea was waiting with open arms. Oh my god. Everyone was celebrating. But then, 
The marketing team was down, so they shut down the contest. Believers in North Korea were heartbroken. But look, at least a valuable lesson was learned about online polls, and this was the first and last mistake ever made with them. Hate to be the very bad news, but nah. <laughs> Pitbull's marketing team has a brilliant idea. As a promotion for Walmart, they want to start an online poll. Okay, 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 Pitbull. That North Korea thing, that was a mistake. So instead, let's make it more local. We'll send you anywhere, but within the country. Huh, take that, trolls. North Korea is off the table. Naturally, a thread start. And the lads started thinking through <laughs> I love the first mm. post on that. The first post Naturally. on the Reddit is, How, how do, do we ruin this? this? <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. <laughs> too much of and it. the lads started thinking through the problem. Unfortunate. They were listening to Pitbull's latest track, Give Me Everything, which features the line, Yeah, right. Picture that with a Kodak. Or better yet, go to Times Square, take a picture of me with a Kodak. The lyrical ingeniousness of the rhyming scheme intrigues them. What could it mean? Kodak? Camera? Cameras have shutters. Shutters are also blinds. Blind. Blind. <laughs> Light is electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy causes aurora borealis. Where can you get the aurora borealis in the United States? Localized in your of kitchen. Of course. Kodiak, Alaska. It's all linked. The remotest Walmart in the entire country. A place that was isolated and dangerous enough that hopefully he wouldn't return. <laughs> 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 So many times. You can never get away from that fucking Yeti. So no matter times. how much. Gosh. Oh. oh, that scares me. Anytime there's a poll up and you can vote multiple times. What's the oh. point of having a poll? Like, oh my god. It's it, like so. Literally, basically, you can vote multiple times means. Oh, by the way, don't bother voting on this unless you're planning to make ten thousands of email addresses, probably with a bot, because that's the one that's going to win this. Yes. Yeah. The winner. Celebrations all round. However, this time, Walmart just went, sure, we'll give him some bear mace, he'll be fine. So he went, <laughs> and he turned the whole thing completely around, and got some good publicity out of it too. Well done. The score was one all. Ah, marketing team This is a one. good sport. Later that year, Taylor Swift's marketing team oh, had no. an idea, but they weren't going to some frozen wasteland. <laughs> Ha, we'll go to the safest place in the whole world. An American school. Take oh, that chance. Let's see if I find this whole damn. experience. Over at headquarters, people are already working on the problem. Their solution? The Horace Mann School. For the deaf. <laughs> Other schools are fighting hard to win. But they're no match for the Russian bot. Wow! <laughs> you beautiful bastards! You scared the shit out of me, but yes! That was, oh my god. That's perfect. That's a home run. Oh. Soon the competition was closed, and Horace Mann won handily, getting nearly 25 times as many votes as the school was second place. Trevor said, I'm not doing it, but then gave them a check and said for a total of $50,000. And that should have been the end of it. But, but then, yeah, there's always Taylor's more. Taylor's marketing team had one more great idea. <coughs> Let's do another poll. No, no, trailer. This time it'll be great. His <laughs> trailer. Team's biggest Swifty fan in the universe competition. You won't have to go anywhere ridiculous. You only have to meet one fan. Absolutely nothing can go wrong. Enter stage left, Charles Z. Oh no. The appropriately aged fans never stood a chance. When manual voting wasn't enough, they enlisted the help of bots, quickly bringing him into first place. Oh. Soon, he had so many votes there was no way he could lose, and everybody at HQ was celebrating. Wow. But then, someone snitched. Some killjoy sent an email to the competition runners and explained how the voting system was being rigged. It was promptly shut down. Uh. Charles would never meet his idol. In the aftermath, the media was unnecessarily cruel to Mr. Z. Hey! Outraged, an online petition was formed, but it went nowhere. But you can't keep a good man down. 
He was going to get the Taylor Swift <laughs> experience one way or another. Oh he my thanked God. his supporters, and that was the end of it. Wow. It took many mistakes, but a valuable lesson was finally learned about the internet and running online polls, and they have never been attempted again. The end. Okay. They literally named a bridge Chuck Norris because nobody crosses Chuck Norris. Well, I mean, come on. <laughs> I call this the Philip DeFranco challenge. It's so much harder than it looks. Try to get the hand gestures as well. And that's where I'm going to end today. So remember, if you like this video and like what I try to do on this channel, do it. Hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you hit that little bell check so you get a notification when we upload these daily as usual. Actually, if you did miss yesterday's video, you want to click a tap right there to do so. Well, well, watch that well if you're looking for something laid back and you've been. Oh, fuck. Something, my name's Philip Frank, and you've been Philip Hollow Phase. I'll see you tomorrow. Nailed it. One take. <laughs> Damn. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> As much as as much as that. I've I've watched Philip DeFranco in the past, yeah, he like he's pretty robotic with his outros. He's just like all, every time it's the same hand gestures, and then and don't get me it's wrong, probably his muscle memory. Like. Well, it is muscle memory, but at the same time, like whenever we do outros, I mean, I usually say peace out or something like that. But sometimes I I vary it up at least, at least. Well, not that anyone's actually watching past like past the point where we're watching the videos in question most of the time dude every time i did a stream i was like all right i'm done with this shit i'm fucking leaving you know I'm just yeah like, I'm I'm no, i have done. no social grace man. <laughs> no yeah i <clears throat> i usually just tell people i hope you have a good night good morning whatever it is where you're at see you guys next yeah. time yeah i've go suck one bye wow <laughs> Damn. it's like I know what I know how hell yeah would do it. It's like he's like, all right, y'all, that's gonna be it for today. Now remember, get your pack set on, bring it to the house. Yeah, just like and then just walk off camera and forget to turn the stream off because he's hell yeah, and that's just how he rolls. It's true. Uh God. So yeah, um, when uh, we have not had any of our polls ruined any of the ones that we've done. No, mine's still attached. It's because we put specific options and don't allow people to insert their own choices. This is true. Nope. And and the thing is, it's usually stuff that I'm doing to myself that's going to result in something pretty funny. For instance, the dread... Or not dreadlock, but the cornrows. I'm still trying to find a friggin' hair salon around here that will do cornrows. All the ones that do it in this area are closed due to coronavirus. Yeah, so the there's COVID, nothing I can do. The COVID's causing They're probably going to be for a while, too, because it just basically hit here pretty Dude, hard. we should try to learn how to do it ourselves. <laughs> if all else fails, I'll do the sad clown just as a just as a, ba a contingency. Because even... Be, I can't even fuck that up. That would be shit, too. I can't... Even I can't oh. fuck that up. So, yeah. Well, how about this? You let us attempt cornrows on you. And if that doesn't work, then you do the sad clown. Okay. All right. And for those of you wondering what the sad clown is, all bald on top, everything on the side remains and is, like, fluffed out. My like, natural hair I, I look. I effectively look like Danny DeVito as Frank Reynolds. So, anyways, I started blessed. So, yeah. Good God. So, yeah, that was uh, Internet Historian. Any poll is a goal and CNN blackmail. Holy crap. Wow. Internet is undefeated, man. It's undefeated. <clears throat> and the internet historian is a good uh, is a good reference to finding out and learning about these stories. Yeah, we are gonna we are gonna do a few of his uh, his internet historian uh, incognito mode videos, the ones that you all keep telling us to do because you know uh, y'all love it whenever we we react to internet historian and internet historian likes it when we react to him too because. He Dude, showed up on several so of awesome. our videos. He showed up on several of our videos that we've done reacting to his stuff and said, "Hey lads, like what you do." So if you want to come over to the Incognita channel, got more videos over there. And I'm like, "All right, thank you, my man." Faux show. Sure. Yeah, an internet history. We love you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. We do love you. Yes. So you're a beautiful bastard. Yes. So if you all want to check out Internet Historian, feel free to click the uh, name in the title of the video. It will take you directly to his channel. And also, if you want to check out more from us, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay notified. And until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate.
I'm Chad. I am Nick. And we'll see you then, everybody. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.